Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 28th of July 2011. Today's trivia question is about comets, real ones this time. Since SOHO was launched in 1995, how many sun grazing comets has it seen? About 20? About 200? About 2,000? Or over 20,000? The answer will be given at the end. Since the last time we met, the sun has become rather active. It has produced 12 C flares, an M flare, and a coronal mass ejection. Most of this activity is coming out of region 1260, as we shall see in a minute. Taking a look at the sunspot groups, the region that I mentioned was in the northwest yesterday has been numbered 1262, although there's some confusion about that, as I shall mention in a while. Region 1260 has continued to grow and produce activity. Region 1261 is quite a large region and is probably going to produce some activity of its own. There's actually a small region seeming to emerge just ahead of it, which might precipitate that. And we have a new region, very, very large, coming over the northeast limb. And so I have high hopes for that one, too. Between regions 1260 and 1262, there is a small region growing up on the sun. I don't know whether it will come to much. It seems to be a little less active than it was last night, but uh, nonetheless, we should keep an eye on it. And the, the two regions in the southeast are still there, although the northern one is just a single spot but I'm surprised that NOAA hasn't numbered them as yet. Now the confusion about Region 1262. Spaceweather.com has labelled the region coming over the northeast limb Region 1262, although NOAA has labelled the one in the northwest 1262, and it is NOAA's numbering system that we are using. So I think Spaceweather.com has got this one wrong. Now let's take a look at the development of these regions over the last 48 hours. First we'll look at the Sunspot movie from the HMI instrument and particularly I would like you to concentrate on the three regions in the northeast. The same would be true for the magnetic movie. Here you're looking for emerging magnetic fields or motions of the magnetic fields. Sometimes they're very subtle and so you have to look very carefully. You may even want to go into full screen mode. In the transition region and coronal movies from the AIA instrument we're looking at the same area, the same three regions in the northeast. But here we're looking for signs of the M flare and you'll find it relatively hard to see because it's not an explosive flare like some of the ones we've seen in the past. It's a contained flare. So all we saw in the transition region movie was a brightening. In the two coronal movies we see a large number of bright loops form but none of them rip open and produce an eruption like we've sometimes uh, uh, experienced before with these large flares. So now let's take a look at what the flare actually looked like in the Iron 14 line which is about 2 million degrees up close and personal. If you look in the heart of the region, you can see a bunch of small loops that brighten and then fade away. It's easily much more dynamic than any of the other region. But at the time of the flare, some much larger loops brighten and become intense, but they don't break and explode open. The flare becomes much more obvious if you look in a higher temperature line, like the Iron 20 line at 131 angstroms. However, the fact that this is a contained flare means that we're unlikely to get a coronal mass ejection from it. And according to the SOHO Quick Look data, we didn't get one. The earlier CME was from one of those C flares that we saw yesterday. So let's take a look at the SOHO chronograph data. First the smaller field of view C2 instrument and then the larger field of view C3 instrument. You can plainly see the coronal mass ejection off of the northeast limb at about 600 UT. Now let's take a look at the state of the solar wind. We can see that the temperature, density and velocity of the solar wind has all been relatively low for the last 24 hours. At geosynchronous altitudes, the high energy electron flux has remained similar to yesterday. And despite the large number of flares and the size of the flares that we've had in the last 24 hours, there have been no changes in the proton flux, again because this is a contained event. From the NOAA 15 images, we can see that the auroral arc remains relatively quiet, just like yesterday, and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background remains at the B5 level, as forecast, the sunspot number has risen to 54. The radio sun intensity is at 99 solar flux units. Solar wind speed is at 370 kilometers per second with a density of less than one proton per cubic centimeter. And geospace conditions remain quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that we have a high probability of getting more C flares, a good chance of getting another M flare, though I think the chance of getting an X flare is still quite remote, although better than it was a couple of days ago. The sunspot number should go yet higher if they get round to counting all these new regions. 
Chance of getting chrono mass ejections is good. And the total wind speed should head higher as this coronal hole in the northwest moves to become more geo effective. However, the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is quite remote. In the slightly longer term, there is nothing due back over the East Limb for at least a day, and then the region that is due back in the south doesn't look all that prominent. The answer to today's trivia question is about 2000. That's how many uh, sun grazing comets a SOHO has seen since it was launched in 1995. In the background here we have some footage from the comet of the 5th of July that crashed into the sun. And uh, if you remember correctly there was all sorts of conspiracy theories about NASA hiding the data and things of that sort. That was just the quick look data. The um, process data is now available and these are some of the images from that. You can actually see the comet dive into the solar atmosphere and evaporate as it crosses in front of the disk of the sun, which I think is really neat. Enjoy. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.